Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. So this is gonna be more of an explanatory video, not really a direct tutorial, but I just wanna go over putting the ability system component in your player character versus the player state. So both options have their pros and cons, and today we're gonna to break it down so you can decide which setup is best for your projects. Let's go ahead and get into it. And first, let's quickly go over what these two are. The player character is your in-game avatar, the one that you get to control. So this knight character that I'm using, for example, and the player state is more like your behind the scenes profile. So I have a player state down here called Ninja Player State because I'm using the Ninja plugin or the Ninja framework, which is amazing for gas. The player state persists across rounds or respawns in multiplayer games, while your player character is just what's on the field at any given moment. So if you put the ability system component on your player character, like like so. It means that the component will only live as long as your character does. So when your character dies or respawns, you will lose the component along with that ability data, like cooldowns, ongoing effects. And that's why this setup is often used for games where respawns and character switching aren't common. However, if you're in a game and you don't need abilities to persist after death or between character swaps, this could be a simpler option. So it's best suited for single player games or non-multiplayer setups where the character is more of a fixed entity. So think single player RPGs or um, games kind of like it takes two or where there's like a main focus where if the main character dies then everyone loses. And the player state is better suited for more complex games. So if you were to add your ability system component, you wouldn't see like this. This is exactly how Ninja sets up. And in my opinion, putting it in the player state is a much better option, mostly because I like to make videos on all my stuff being replicated. And since the player state lives beyond the destruction or respawn of your character and your abilities and your attributes, cooldowns will all... Per so now if your game involves a lot of respawns or switching between characters, putting the ability system component in player state is a much better option. Since player state lives beyond the destruction or respawn of your character, your abilities, attributes, and cooldowns, they'll all persist, even if your character dies. This makes player state ideal for multiplayer games or complex projects where persistence is key. When it comes to networking, player state has another advantage. In multiplayer games, player state is replicated across all clients, which means any abilities or attributes you add to it will automatically sync up across the network. So if you've seen my previous tutorials, I was doing this manually in the player character, which is fine, but it is better to just do it in the player state and makes things much easier. But if you're using player character, you'll need to handle a lot more on your own when it comes to replication. So if you're working on multiplayer games, player state is almost always the better way to go for maintaining consistent states across players. So how do you choose? Here's a quick rule of thumb. If your game is simple and if you don't need abilities to persist across respawns or character changes, go with the player character. It's easier to set up for small single player games and it's usually more than enough. But if you're developing a multiplayer game or something more complex where persistence is important, player state is your best bet. It keeps things stable across respawns, rounds, and different characters, plus it handles replication much more cleanly in networked environments. So personally, I like to prefer doing it in player state no matter what, even for single player games, just because maybe eventually you want to release an update saying your game is now multiplayer friendly. Just so eventually you can just say, hey, this game is multiplayer friendly now. And yeah, just in case you change your mind later and don't want to stick to single player, it's just easier to make that transition or just release it as an update for your game. So there you have it. Now you know the difference between player character and player state for your ability system component in Unreal Engine 5. If you're building a multiplayer game or anything with complex persistence, definitely consider the player state route. As always, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my notifications, and I've got lots more Unreal Engine content coming your way. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Code of Growth.